What's going on guys, Donovan here with another life page. So, um, in this particular story, three of them as a matter of fact, I definitely, from my angle, and, um, three times I got robbed. Um, three times I got robbed. And the third time, I didn't get robbed, but the third time, I almost died. Almost got shot. Story number one. High school. There is a path um, that I used to walk to high school. Cut down the streets and then I go up this one street that goes into a field that's a park before you get to the school, the high school. So one day, I was, yeah, I was walking up that street, and I see this guy coming down the street. I'm going to cross the street. I cross the street, he crosses the street. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get in the middle of the street. <laughs> I get in the middle of the street, he gets in the middle of the street. So, you know something's up, you know something's up. So I try to like pass, pass a guy. And we're like about to collide. And he says, what's up, check it in. And this is the first time that I heard that. I mean, this is the first time growing up in Detroit, going to high school, ninth grade year, yeah. And I'm walking up the street, the guy's walking down the street, face to face, check it in. What do you mean, check it in? I mean, give me your money, man, give me your money. And so I'm shocked. I'm, I'm like shocked. And I have two cents in my pocket. Literally, I have two cents, two pennies in my pocket. So, I said, what you want, man? You want my pennies? I got two cents. What, you want that? And he starts cracking up. He started just busting out laughing. He said, no, man, I don't, I don't want, I don't want that, man. I don't, I don't want your pennies, man. I don't want that. And he's still laughing. He just cuts around me. And walks down, you know, walks down the street. I go up, you know, go to a school. One of my brothers from the Brotherhood, um, Chris, sharp guy, sharp dresser, nice dresser, real cool guy. One day, after high school, everybody usually hangs out in the parks, the swing set. Uh, so me and a couple of others, Chris, we were all at the swing set. And Chris is wearing his chain. Um, so I'm looking across the field, like across the park, and I see the same guy who tried to rob me, like the The other day and he's looking at Chris and I'm looking at Chris I'm like Chris wearing a chain oh and he's looking at Chris very hard really hard and so I start looking at him and then he notices me looking at him then he busts out laughing he starts to laugh and then he walks away so, I never did tell Chris about that, that I think he's about to get robbed, but um, that was the first story. Second story, number two, is that we had a family business at one point in time, it took up two years, about a year and a half of my life in high school, and so about 12th grade, 
I became a paper boy. That was over and I was a paper boy. So one day I was collecting, collecting money. We're out. And I was on my block. I was coming up the block. And guy comes out of nowhere. Check it in. Got a little, got his hand in his pocket. See a little point. I don't know if I wanted to test it, but you see a little point. Check it in. So, like I said, I don't want to test it. I don't want to see if it's real or not. So I give him money. About $20. And I'm just feeling bad. I, you know, I, I think that was all I, I did collect that day. And so I go home. I come in the door. I tell my mother and my stepfather I just got robbed. My mother freaks out. My stepdad wants a description of the guy. And so I'm trying to describe the guy and I just kind of block my mom out from freaking out. Just, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm not trying to hear what she, <laughs> what the questions she's asked. Ask me a million questions, but I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to tell my stepdad, this is all I remember. He goes back in the room. Then he rushes, comes rushing out the house. So we know, I know he didn't went and got the gun, <laughs> got the gun. And um, he just steps out for a minute. And so I'm, I'm listening to my mom freak out, panic. And then my stepdad comes back and it's kind of winded and puts the gun up and uh that was kind of that of course he didn't find the guy and uh because i i just i wasn't really going for detail and and like i said i didn't want to test it i didn't want to test if it was real or not and um uh, so that happened but the interesting thing is that this was a weekend that uh uh, my mom and stepdad wanted to go to Chicago. They were planning on going to Chicago. They went to Chicago. Uh, so my mom and her franticness pretty much put me on lockdown. She was like, oh, you can't go out. You know, stay in the house. You know, I'm going to call you with a certain phone call. She would ring the phone once, hang up, call back, ring it twice. And that's when I know it was it was her calling me. And um, just to check and see if I'm still at the house. So I was in the house. I was a senior in high school. I'm in the house by myself because my mom freaked out. I got robbed. My mom freaked out. And so I'm just chilling. I'm, I microwaves were out back then, so I, I'm cooking hot dogs and Popeyes and I'm you know I'm making myself stuff to eat I'm washing the dishes drying the dishes so my, when my parents get home my mother asked me well what did you eat I said well I ate da 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 but what plates did you use I said I, I used the dishes and I washed the dishes don't you know, I was washing dishes from that point on. Yeah. But that's the second story. Third story is a little bit more serious because um, I actually saw the gun. And it was a situation where I, um, I felt like it was no way to go. I felt like I was in the best place to be for this robbery uh, and I'll explain in a minute but it was getting late and I knew that uh, 1 12 30 1 o'clock 
in the morning was the last bus. So I, I knew I had to get out there on, I had to get out there on Seven Mile Evergreen and hit this bus stop or else I, I wasn't, I wasn't getting home. I wasn't getting to my destination. So I'm waiting on the bus. That time of the morning, you know ain't nobody around. It was definitely between 12 and 1 waiting on the last Imperial bus. And um, car pulls up, two brothers, and um, man, I could have lost my life, guys. Two brothers, um, asked me, do I have any money? I was first class bus pass. I had the monthly bus pass because that's 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 how I rode. I caught that bus. That was my transportation. And uh, they asked me for my money. Told them, hey, all I got is a bus pass. That's all I got. And so it turned into a conversation, mainly between the two guys, but it turned into a conversation of what should they do with me. You know, um, should they blast me uh, or what? You know, as they're contemplating this, and I mean, by this time, the passenger door is open. Brother got the gauge sitting on his lap. And um, they're just talking it over. And I'm in my mind, I'm debating Okay, should I run? Because if I run, it's going to be worse. And uh, there's a block. For those of you who, who know Detroit and Seven Mile Evergreen area, the first block from Evergreen, that's where the bus stop was. And there's this block. It was this block. I was thinking I can, I can hit that block. The block was completely pitch dark no lights um just dogs heard them dog barking and to run up on a block in the dark jumping in a backyard when dobermans were really big back then i wasn't gonna take that chance it was either that or stand there watch them decide under whatever light i, I did have you know, because there was a street light there. No police, of course. Because um, it was it was early in the morning. When, when, so I am... I am just hoping that bus comes. And thank God, while they're there deciding, trying to decide my fate, the bus came. And... I said, hey man, the bus is coming. They closed the door and took off. Guys, that was a terrifying moment because being a black man in Detroit, frantic mom. <laughs> My mom used to tell me all the time, statistics say that, you know, you won't live past 35. And uh, there's a chance you won't live past 35. And having that in your head growing up with living in Detroit and with personas or images of Detroit, you know, when you tell people you're from Detroit or you lived in Detroit, and the first thing that hits their mind is like, oh, murder capital? Oh, you know. Do they really kill people there and all these things um, that they can't believe that you're nice. They can't believe that you're a decent person. They can't believe uh, you're not thuggish or whatever. Um, they can't believe it. They, they believe the hype. Um, some things are true, you know, and every place has a hood. Every place has a, a element of crime, an element of trash in its own kind but um, 
there are also good people in those places too. And um, um, in all three cases, I just, looking back, I just had an, an attitude about it. I had a, a calm attitude about it. I, I just, the first incident, I was truthful. Same thing with the third. And I think, I reflecting back on that, I think about, you know, how do we react? How do you react when you feel robbed? When you feel wronged, when you feel cheated? Is it a smart one? <laughs> you know, or a bad one? You, you gotta think. down over here sorry about that having a little bit of technical difficulties um, but I'm quite sure by now you get the gist of what I was saying in this life page is that <clears throat> we all have to watch our reactions uh, when it comes to things that happen in our lives uh, when we're feeling robbed cheated uh, wronged we have to watch our reactions uh, I just wanted to share that today and as usual if you like the content like, comment, subscribe, ring the, uh, hit the bell notification, and you'll know the next video that comes out by me. That's it for now, guys. Peace.